Hey guys, and welcome back to Rage Gaming, more Dragon's Dogma 2. Today I'm talking a variety of interesting or useful things to know in your own playthroughs. We're now getting into the late days of the game, players are nearing their first completion. So now because of that, I'll be bouncing around relevant details and things to consider that will hopefully be interesting or helpful. So let's just get into it. First up, a fast one to do with your camping kit. This is the Elite Camping Kit. It's high quality, which means it stands up against monster attacks really well. When you're camping out in the wilds, you might be ambushed, and the more times you camp in a row, well, that's more likely. And so getting attacked and having your camp broke is really annoying because now you've lost your camping kit. So it's something that's more sustainable and will last those situations better, but also, yes, it's lightweight. 4 kg compared to your average of 7 or 8 or even more is half the weight of the normal camping kit you're having to lug around. And the sooner you have one in a playthrough, even better. It took me way too long to actually start using one, and it's, yeah, it's really easy to get. There's a very simple side quest here in the checkpoint town. As you enter, you'll be approached by an NPC called Offal, and he's asking for something called the Jedi Orb. You'll take two steps in town before another NPC, Everard, interrupts you to say, hey, I also want that. You can actually please both of them technically and get both their rewards if you want. There's the scrap shop in town, and that's actually where you can get the Jedi Orb. You'll need 7,500 gold, which is no big deal, and then you can give it to whoever you want. Offal will reward the elite camping kit, so that's obviously worth it, but if you're okay with this while at the scrap shop, you could have a fake Jedi Orb forged, which which you can then give to Offal. He'll take it, you'll get the elite camping kit, and then you have the real one still to give to Everard. He will actually check that it's real, so you need to give him the real one, or pay off the scrap shop guy if you really want to throw gold at this quest. But you get some nice money out of this, and a ring of skullduggery for extra damage from dealing damage to enemies from behind. Obviously, if you just want the elite camping kit and you want to be nice, you can just give it to Offal in the first place. No forgery needed. Okay, so for this next one, we're talking about a pretty helpful tip when it comes to enhancing your gear. You're going to need lots of monster parts to enhance that gear, and the higher level the gear, the higher level the parts actually need to be. By the time that you reach the true end game in the unmod world, obviously the Dragon Forge will update his stock, and then you can buy some of the best gear in the game. These are some of the best weapons available, and also the best armor sets, all bought for Worms Life Crystals instead of, say, normal currency like gold. The problem here is that the enhancement materials required get steadily harder to actually access and, you know, have a good amount of. I'm going to need some Granite Medusa Bones, and in fact, I'm going to need two of them, as well as Dragon Dragon scale, which is no problem, we have tons of those. Whereas for the armor set, I need pointed fangs. I need gear that comes from much more rare, limited resources. But whether you're in the normal world or this one, there's a very helpful trick to know when it comes to actually getting the materials you need. So let's look at this again. I've got the dragon scale, I'm missing one granite medusa bone. So if we go to the scrap shop, whether you're doing that in the normal world or this world, we can take that monster part that I have and request a forgery. Yeah, you can even do monster parts like a Medusa bone, which is crazy, and have him make me a fake one as normal. And now we have the Granite Medusa bone times two. As you can see, there's no fake one here. They're just the real thing. What this means is forging monster parts is pretty incredible, and these pretty damn hard to get enhancement materials are no longer so hard to get. You just need to make sure you actually have one of them so that you can do the necessary upgrading you need to do. Thanks to that trick, I was able to get my weapons to fully upgrade, and now I can use a worm fire upgrade to get them to four out of four, which is obviously huge. And if I wasn't using this trick, well, it just would have been a lot harder otherwise. I didn't realize we could actually do this with enhancement materials until very recently, so I hope this helps you. And now for a quick follow-up to one of the things we talked about last time. We're talking about the rather incredible specialization that you can find with a pawn. And here it is. Forager. This allows the pawn to spot materials as he describes, which means as I open the map, we now have these unique markers from the Forager specialization. We can have a look at that and go, hey, look, there's pointed fangs right there. It's not just going to show me like ore or something. It literally shows me the location of relevant monsters and things that I need. What it's specifically showing me, which is really interesting, is what I need from the blacksmith. So if I want to enhance my gear right now, I need pointed fangs. That's the only thing that I re need right now. My pawn knows that because I've interacted with, you know, a smith to reveal that. So as I open my map and go have a look, it's only showing me the relevant things that I need to upgrade right now. So let's update things. And instead of looking at what I need, let's have a look at what my follower needs. We'll just need to upgrade this so it actually needs something. Okay, so now I need dappled ore and black crystal. Let's upgrade this. Now I need gold ore. With this one, I'm going to need dappled ore and then twisted pinion. And for these, I'm going to need some oily slime as well. So as we open up the map, 
suddenly things have changed. It's not only showing me the pointed fangs that I need, it's also showing me those other resources that we're still hunting. So this is specifically how the forager specialization actually works and how you can use it to your advantage to show you exactly what you're looking for on the map. But as commenters let me know on the previous video, such as Deepak and Existential Stake, fantastic name, what we can do is press the search button. As you can see, this has three different tabs of facilities, areas, and materials, and then it's listed based on me or the pawn. So let's look at Isern and have a look what she needs. Once again, let's say pick the weapon and it shows me what's needed for that. Not only that, it shows me what's needed for the different styles. So if I was to upgrade with Elven, I'm going to need Dappledore and Black Crystal, but one of each. And as you can see, as I'm going up and down this list, it's moving me around on the map to specifically the node that I'm looking for. Instead of manually going through them and going, is this Black Crystal? Is this Black Crystal? Is that Black Crystal? No, instead of doing all that, I can go straight to the one that I know has the black crystal. Absolutely fantastic feature. And so with those two enhancement related topics, I hope that can really help you because it's really helped me. All right, so for our next thing, it's the incredibly undervalued, under talked about, it's just really strong silence. You can use this without actually being a mage user or whatever when consuming the grimoire prescribed tranquility here. So no matter what vocation you are, you can do this and it's not that hard. You won't be using it all the time, but in the special moments, silence can be really good. If you want to use it as a spell for yourself or maybe your pawn, then you're going to need a mage that is rank 6 at a minimum. This will unlock the spell itself, and that's just the base version. There's the higher, like, advanced version that you can unlock at higher ranks. But even with this base version, I want to show you how effective it can be. Let's take a Drake, one of the more dangerous enemies that exist in the normal game. They cast multiple kinds of spells. The most common ones you'll see is that purple one where they summon lightning down to strike on you and all your pawns, or the other one where they have the fire that they channel and they sort of summon three meteors. That can be deadly and it's often wiping out knocking down pawns. Did you know that casting silence is going to stop it from doing that spell? It's not only going to interrupt it, but it's going to leave the enemy exposed. For example, when you cast silence on a drake that's mid-flight, for whatever reason, it just knocks it straight down. It's an incredibly potent thing you can do. I would argue that the Drake's most dangerous attacks are literally those two spells. Mage is probably one of the least popular vocations to play directly, and yet is also probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular, vocation to have as a main pawn or a temporary pawn. You've got the weapon boons, you've got the healing, the attack speed and movement speed buff, the infinite stamina dome. Working in one of those slots as a silence for these situations is well worth it. And if you really don't want to, the tomes, the grimoires, they exist too. But it could be ridiculously effective against, say, whites that are pretty much entirely casting throughout the whole fight. All I'm saying is it can be very potent and actually using it, yeah, I do recommend it. On the topic of killing drakes though, there is actually a really effective way to, well, instantly kill them. And that is water or the brine as it's called. Like anything in this game, if it goes into the brine, it's gonna die. So if you get a drake to go into the brine, it will just instantly perish. This is surprisingly easy to do because for example, when you're fighting a drake, it will jump up into the air and hang there occasionally. Maybe it'll fire some spells while it's hanging in the air. Maybe it'll do some fire breathing, but usually in my experience, it's looking towards me. And as I walk towards it, it kind of backs up. So I can slowly sort of push it to hover over where I want, which if I'm standing right by the edge of water, that means it's over a river, water, whatever. As soon as it goes to land, especially in this case, it instantly died and I could hardly believe it. And I'm not the only person who's been doing this. There was this Reddit clip from Lost Raven Reader. They didn't really intentionally do this. The Drake was just hovering over this river and while they were trying to wind up an attack, it just plunged into the water and instantly killed itself. There are a few ways that you could make this happen. For example, when the Drake's using the flame breath, it actually kind of backs up a little bit so you could force it to back into the water. Essentially, if there's ever a river or like a pool or something of that kind of size near what you're fighting, you could choose to just instantly kill them by abusing the mechanics. It doesn't just work on drakes, like there's this other clip that we saw on Twitter by Dropout Dragon. This is with a griffin, and while they were fighting it relatively normal, it hovered over some water and then decided to land and yeah, instantly killed itself. You can do this with absolutely any enemy, allowing you to take down some of the strongest enemies or enemies well above your level instantly without much threat. So for our next thing, we have Sarah here, which is very clearly now a blacksmith. As you can see, I can enhance my equipment with them. And it's not just any enhancement, it's dwarven enhancement, which means I have access to dwarven smithing here at Brock Smithy in Back Patel, which is 
so much better than having to go all the way over to here to the Windwalker's home, which, you know, generally the closest place is the Volcanic Island Camp or this long walk all the way through the Grotto Cave just to get there. It is a massive pain, so to have Dwarven Smithing available just generally in a much more convenient location is wonderful. That alone makes this tip so valuable and something I wish I'd realized way sooner and it's tied to a specific side quest that i just didn't know existed the result of that of course is going to be the ability to get this enhancement but it's also going to unlock one of the best vendors in the entire game sarah starts selling you the best equipment you can actually get your hands on pre end game pre unmod world and as you can see it's not only the best pre on Mod World gear, but it's also at a 5% discount, which technically if I were to give her some gifts, which is what we discussed in the last video of this series, we could get that discount even higher. So it's well worth doing, and the sooner you do it in a playthrough, well, the more you benefit. So as I explained, it's the quest Dulled Steel Cold Forge. To get this done, you just need to go to the Vernworth Castle kind of grounds, and on the main path that leads into the castle, on the left, we have this NPC here. By speaking with him, he lets us know that he's actually been looking for us. He brings us over to a more secretive location to let us know about the Regalia Sword. It's fell into disrepair though, and he begs you to kind of restore it. We need a master blacksmith to do that, and if we go to the Vernworth blacksmith, they let us know that we're going to need to find the dwarf in Back Batal. As you probably expect then, you come to Brock Smithy, only he's retired. His apprentice does give us some help though, telling us to go to a nearby cave and grabbing 50 15 of a specific resource. So just gather 15 of these and go straight back to the forge. And Sarah will fail to use it to convince Brock to actually help with the sword. Give her some time and she'll work out what the next step is. And it's to go to a specific forge where she can heat a hammer to the max capacity to actually restore the sword. That is the mountain base cave here, just southwest of the volcanic island camp. As we head in, we're just gonna have to pass through the cave to its end where we'll eventually meet up with Sarah. On the way though, make sure you're having a look around. There's a chest in here that contains cinder spine which is one of the best if not the best warrior weapon you can get pre unmod world and you don't have to pay for it so it's well worth gathering while you're there in any case find sarah at the back of the cave escort her quickly to the exit so that the hammer maintains its heat and then you can go back to back Batal to meet her there brock won't be able to help himself now he'll get involved and in doing so you'll get the restored regalia sword we bring that back to vernworth to bring it to the npc that started it all and that's the quest done good xp thirty-five thousand gold and then upon return to back Patel from then on Sarah will be fully fledged as a blacksmith which means we can now use her for enhancement for dwarven smithing which is incredible and then obviously you have access to all of the incredible gear in a very good convenient location like I said I wish I knew about this side quest a lot sooner it's very clearly something you could get to say early mid game and then you have access to some incredible gear and the convenience of that so while I regret not knowing it hopefully this information helps you but there you have it Hopefully even more helpful or interesting things to know or try in your own gameplay. In any case, if you guys have any extra tips along the lines of this topic, let us know in the comments. But until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye